In this video, we will cover an introduction to equilibrium. In stoichiometry calculations, we generally assume that reactions run to completion. However, when a chemical reaction is carried out in a closed vessel, the system achieves equilibrium. Equilibrium is achieved when there's a constant ratio between the concentration of the products to the reactants. So the concentration of the products becomes constant and the concentration of the reactants becomes constant. Also, it's when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction, meaning that the rate of forming product, or how fast the product is formed, is the same rate at which reactant is formed. So, <clears throat> different reactions are going to have def different equilibria, and that means that at once equilibrium is formed, there's going to be different concentrations of products versus reactants, and it depends on the system that we're looking at. So we write equilibrium expressions for reaction to help us determine whether a reaction it will rather go forward or whether it will rather go in the reverse. So let's say we have reaction this reaction here, where we have J moles of A combined with K moles of B to produce L moles of C and M moles of D. To write the equilibrium expression, K is a constant, and we write a fraction where we have our products over the reactants. And these brackets here represent the concentration or the, the molar concentration. So whenever you see uh, a chemical formula surrounded by brackets, you know that that means that's the concentration of that substance. Okay, so we have the concentration of our products raised to the power of their coefficient in the balanced equation. So we have the concentration of our products divided by the concentration of the reactants, also raised to the power of the coefficient in the, in the reaction. Something that is important to note when writing equilibrium expressions is that we do not include liquids in solids. So <clears throat> do not include these in the expression. Because during a chemical reaction, a solid does not change its concentration. What is the concentration of a solid? Its density. It cannot change its density. What is the concentration of a pure liquid? The concentration of a pure liquid is also density. So the density of liquids and solids do not change. And throughout a chemical reaction, those val the values of density do not change of liquids. We're talking about changes in concentration. So we can talk about gases and aqueous solutions. Let's do some practice writing equilibrium expressions. I will do a few of them with you, and then you will practice. You can pause the video, practice on your own, and I will come back and give you the answers. Let's do the first one together. The K equilibrium for this reaction, remember it's the products over the, re, uh, the reactants. So I'm gonna write, it's gonna be the concentration of nitrogen dioxide raised to the power of two divided by the concentrations of my reactants. Notice that there are no coefficients for those reactants, so there's no power of 10 for each of them. Let's do this one down here on the bottom, uh, I2 aqueous 
forms I2 solid. In this reaction, we've got aqueous and we've got solid. Remember that the K equilibrium is always going to be equal is always going to be equal to the concentration of the products of the reactants. Well, being that we cannot use the concentration of our product, we put the number 1 as a placeholder and we have now the concentration of I2. And we will do one more together. Let's do this uh, two moles of lead sulfide reacts with three moles of oxygen to form two moles of lead oxide and two moles of sulfur dioxide. So our K equilibrium is going to be equal to the concentration of our products. Notice that we cannot include lead oxide because it is a solid. And so we'll put SO2 here. And for our reactants, we cannot put lead sulfide because it is also a solid. So we'll include O2 raised to the power of 3. You can pause the video now and practice. Okay. Let's take a look at the problems that you worked on your own. Here we have two moles of carbon solid plus three moles of hydrogen gas produces one mole of ethane. In our equilibrium, uh, we put our products, concentration of our products over the reactants. Notice that we do not use carbon solid in our uh, equilibrium expression. Okay, here we have PCO5 plus water produces two moles of HCl and one mole of POCl3. For our equilibrium expression, we have the concentration of HCl raised to the power of two. The concentration of POCl3 is essentially raised to the power of one. We don't write it all over the concentration of water. We do not include PCL5 because it is a solid. The very last problem we have here, uh, magnesium chloride solid forming magnesium ion and chloride ion, two chloride ions actually. So our equilibrium constant only contains the concentration of the magnesium ion times the concentration of the chloride ion raised to the power of two. We do not include the magnesium chloride solid in our equation. What you might have noticed, however, is that we've got two different types of reactions going on here. For this set of reactions here, these are chemical reactions. Notice that we are starting with one material, one set of materials making something new. Whereas these two reactions here, these are physical, physical reactions in which we have I2 aqueous or dissolved in water now forms a solid. How do you think that might happen? Well, if it's dissolved in water and becomes solid, you just evaporate off the water. That's a physical process. This process here, we have magnesium chloride solid becoming aqueous magnesium ion and chloride ion. Well, that's simply putting magnesium chloride into water because that's what aqueous means. Aqueous means dissolved in water. So this also is just a physical process. So what does that tell us about equilibrium? Equilibrium can be described for chemical processes as well as physical processes. Now that we've learned how to do equilibrium constant expressions, let's take a look at what the values can tell us. <clears throat> we have here a reaction of iron to ion plus 
silver ion and we end up with iron three and silver solid. This is actually a redox reaction and when we, where we have a transfer of electrons and we can have an equilibrium set up here. This information says that at equilibrium we have our concentration of our Fe2 ion is 0.5 molar. Notice this concentration symbol is in molar concentrations. For the silver ion, we, it's, a, it's at one molar. And as our iron 3 ion is at 1.5 molar. So what does this mean? Once equilibrium has reached, this is the concentration of all of these substituents of this chemical reaction. So this question is asking, calculate the equilibrium constant for the reaction. Well, first we have to write our equilibrium expression in which we have the concentration of our products over the concentration of our reactants. Notice that I did not put in silver solid as one of our products. And now that I have the expression, I can put in my concentrations and determine uh, the equilibrium constant. So we have, we just put in our numbers. Put that in your calculator and you get three as your equilibrium constant. The next question asks, is this a forward or, re or reverse reaction favor? Well, how do we know? Remember at the beginning of the video, I said that we use the equilibrium expressions to help us determine whether an equilibrium would rather form products or form reactants once at equilibrium. So you have a chemical reaction, you put everything together, and over time, once equilibrium sets up, you're either gonna have more product or more reactant, right? And so if you have more product, more products at equilibrium means that the forward reaction is favored. If we have more reactant at equilibrium, then that means that the reverse reaction is favored. Rxn is my favorite symbol for reaction. All right, so this is at equilibrium. All right, since we know that more product versus reactant gives us a forward reactant, I'm sorry, it gives us a forward reaction that's favored, well then that ties right into our equilibrium constant, right? Because if we have more product, taking a look at our equilibrium constant, then that means, let me write this up here. <clears throat> if I have more product, then that means that my K equilibrium, the value is gonna be greater than one. If I have more reactant, then my K equilibrium value is less than one. If I have approximately equal amounts of product and reactants, right, they're pretty much equal, then my K equilibrium is going to be equal to 1. Looking at the K, the equilibrium expression for this forward reaction, notice that its equilibrium constant is 3. So we can say, generally, that the forward reaction is favored. Let's prove that the forward reaction is favored by writing the equilibrium constant for the reverse reaction. So over here, let me write that this is our forward reaction. So let's take a moment and write the equilibrium expression for the reverse reaction. So in the reverse reaction, 
let's say this is K equilibrium and this is our reverse reaction. Here we have our products. So we have iron 2 concentration times silver ion concentration all divided by the iron 3 ion concentration. If we put the numbers in, we get 0 0.5 times 1.0 divided by 1.5. That value we get is 0 0.33333, right? So notice that the reverse reaction has a K equilibrium of 0 0.33, meaning that the reactants are more concentrated than the products in this situation. And it would rather not go in that direction, rather go in the forward direction. So what can we say that K reverse is equal to 1 over K forward? And let's go ahead and answer our question here. Is the forward or reverse reaction favored? The forward reaction is favored. Why? Because K equilibrium forward is greater than 1. 